as part of the getting started we will be developing a small etl process in this a source file which is flight state.csv is uploaded to the amazon s3 this will be mapped in the etl as a source the source data will go through some sample transformations once the data is transformed the transformed data will be uploaded to the target s3 bucket as we are developing the etl process with the help of aws glue so we will be creating some aws glue objects during this process the most important is the data catalog which will keep the metadata information about the source data in the form of database tables this will be done with the help of crawler which can automatically scan the source data and create the data catalog table for you what we are looking at here is the sample data which represents the flight details for instance the origin city destination city flight date the airline etc the data has total of 64 columns and almost 0.45 million records i'll be using this data as the source data for our demonstration i have uploaded the data to my s3 bucket which i'm calling it as qtb glue demo source data as you can see the sample data file is already been uploaded here as you can see the format of the file is csv and this file we are going to refer it while creating the source table definition in AWS Glue. I'm going to log in as admin Glue now. And we are at the AWS console. Let's click on AWS Glue. On the left hand side, under data catalog, click on crawlers. And this will list down the crawlers which we need to access the S3 resources. Let's go and create the crawler for our S3 source data. I'm going to call it flight source data crawler. For the crawler, we need to define the data source. We currently do not have any, so I'm going to add a data source, which is the S3 location. So I'll select the default type, which is S3, but otherwise you have options to select other data sources as well. For the S3, we need to specify the location of S3 data, which is in this account itself. So we don't need to make any changes here. I'm going to browse the S3 buckets. And this is the bucket which we have created for the source data. So I'm going to select on this, click on choose and put the forward slash. Let's click on add an S3 data source. And our data source is added here. Let's click on next. At this step, we need to configure the security settings where primarily we need to provide the AWS Glue service role, which we just created. I'm going to select the AWS Glue service role here. That's all I need at this point of time. At this step, I need to define the output configuration, which means as I said earlier, the crawler is going to map the definition to in the form of a table and database. So we need to choose the database and the table for the mapping. We do not have any database, so I'm going to click on create. I'll select the database name here. I'll give it a name, flight source TB, and click on create database. Our database is created if we go on our output configuration page and refresh it. Our database is listed here, so I'm going to select this. The crawler is automatically going to generate the table name for you. If you want to provide any prefix, you can provide it here, but we'll skip this step for now and click on next. This is our set of configuration. Let's click on the create crawler. And the crawler is successfully created. Although the crawler is created, but still it has not picked up the information from the source. For that, I'm going to click on the run crawler here. And the crawler is successfully started. This is going to take a few minutes, so let's wait for this to complete.
As you can see, the crawler run is completed now. We can check if it has created the right table definitions. This is the table name which it has generated. It's given the same name as our source bucket name, but don't worry about the table name. Let's go and explore this table. As you can see, it has correctly identified the number of columns, which is 64 here. Here is the schema definition. This is the column name and the data type. This is a list of first 20 columns, then from 20 to 40, from 40 to 60, and at last 61 to 64. With this, we have successfully configured the data catalog table definitions mapped to the source data, which is present in AWS S3. We are back to the AWS Glue console. In this video, I'm going to create a sample ETL job referring our source data. On the left-hand side, under the ETL jobs, click on Visual ETL. Under Create Jobs section, click on Visual ETL again. And this provides the graphical user interface where you can use drag and drop to create and visualize the ETL jobs. We are going to add the very first node for our ETL job. I'll select the AWS Glue data catalog here. I'll select this and then define the database which we have already created, which is Flight Source DB. And we are going to select the table here, which is QTB Glue Demo Source Data, which was created as part of the crawler run. Now that our source definition is set, let's click on the node to create a sample transformation. For the demonstration, I'm going to use the drop fields transform here. As we saw in the source data, we have 64 columns and as an output, I'm interested only in few of these columns. AWS Glue already provides the drop fields transform, which I'm going to use it here. We can configure the drop fields transform here and select the appropriate fields which we want in the output. I'm going to select this to ease my process. Let me select the fields which we need as an output. I need the date. I need the airline ID. I need the origin airport ID. I need the origin city name. I need the destination airport ID. I need the destination city name and I need departure time as well as the arrival time. That's all. We need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven columns in the output data. So let's stick to this and click on save. Let's give a name to this job. We will call it Sample flight data ETL. I'm going to add one more sample transformation, which is the change schema. With change schema, you can change the column name or the data type. These are the columns which are going to be present as an output of this particular step. I'm going to change the names here. So I'll select the name I'll call it as flight date. Airline ID is fine. Origin airport ID is fine. Origin city name, destination, this. Departure, I'll just call the departure and I'll call this as arrival. For the departure time and the arrival time, I'm also going to change the data type. I'll select this as timestamp instead of long. Okay, so that's it and I'll click on this step. Uh, as you can see, it's loading the data preview. This provides a preview on the output data that how it will look like. If there is any error in transformation, we can instantly get to know with this data preview feature. 
we can see that uh, column names are correctly captured here with the data also correctly captured. As I said, that data preview can really help in investigating if the transformation is happening correctly or not. I'll just give you an example. For the flight date, if I, uh, if I select the date, it expects the record in a specific format. So this is going to fail, but I'll just select this to show you. This is reloading the data preview. And you can see the flight date is coming as null, which is not expected. So I'm going to go back to the string format. As the last step, I'm going to add a note and set a final target. I'm interested in moving the final data to my another S3 bucket. So I'm going to choose S3 as the target. I'm going to select this as a parent and then add the node here. I'll select S3 as my target which means the transform data will be transferred to the S3 location, which I'm going to specify. I'll click on the browse S3 here. I've already created a different bucket. I'm calling it as QTB clue demo target data. I'll select this for the destination of my output data. For the output, I can also specify what particular format. So I'll say I want the format in the CSV itself. For the compression, I'll say none, and that's all I need. And I'll click on the save. With this, our sample ETL process is in place, which picks up the data from the AWS S3 source data bucket. We are putting two transformations to this source. First, we are dropping the fields. We are only picking up the seven fields out of the 64 columns present in the data. Then we are doing some minor changes in the schema. We are making some changes in the column name. And then we are changing the data types for the departure time as well as the arrival time. And that's all we need. And then once the data is transformed, we are pushing it to another S3 bucket, which represents the target destination. We are already at the AWS console and looking at the sample ETL job, which we created. On the right hand side, there is an option to run. We can also go to the uh, visual ETL blocks. If I refresh this page, I can see the job name here. I can click on this and I can click on a run job from here as well. So I'll select this option and click on run job. As you can see, it has successfully started the job. This is going to take a few minutes, so let's wait for this to complete. We can also check the status by clicking on this job name itself and click on the runs here. You can see the run status showing as running. As you can see, the run status is updated to succeeded. And it shows that it took almost one minute, 35 seconds for us. To validate the results, I'm going to go to the S3 console. Click on the target data bucket. And you can see it has created two different files. I'm going to download these files. And this is the second file. Now that we have downloaded the files, let's, I'm going to open it. Great, so this is our first file. As you can see, it has generated the required columns only. It has correctly captured the departure time, arrival time. It has correctly updated the column name as we provided in the configuration. The first table contains 0.25 million records and I'm expecting the other file to be containing the remaining record. So let's go and open that. This is the second part of the file. And if you see, it has the same set of columns. And if you see the number of records, this is roughly 0.2 million records. So altogether, it has the 0.45 million records, which were actually present in the source database which means our sample ETL job is successfully working. It is able to transform in terms of reducing the columns. It's able to transform the column names. 
it's able to transform the timestamp values for the departure time as well as the arrival time successfully. With this, we have successfully executed our first ETL job in AWS Glue.